In this video, I am going to show you how to draw a tiger in graphite, which is also known as pencil. For this drawing, I am using Strathmore colored pencil paper with the Faber-Castell 9000 graphite pencil set and a few mechanical pencils. I have links to all of the supplies I used for this drawing in the video description. I am starting off by taking a 2B pencil to kind of sketch in the outline for the eye. And I'm focusing on adding in the shadows only at this point. Then I'm going to fill in a sort of base layer for the eye using, I believe it was either a 2H or it was an H. Either way, it was a lighter shade pencil because I am working on Strathmore uh, colored pencil paper, which is a more textured paper. And this allows you to be able to get more layers with your drawings. So you can fill in a light base layer of lighter um, lead hardnesses and be able to go over the top of that with darker lead hardnesses later to kind of darken up and build more structure. Now I am going to take a 4B and I am going to sketch in the shapes for all of the stripes on the tiger. I want to get in as much of these as possible before I start filling in any, any of the other details because I don't want to lose my um, sketches that I've already got in. If I were to fill in the drawing using the lighter shades at this point, I'm going to kind of lose where those very, very faint sketches are to indicate to me some of the stripes on this tiger. It is important as I'm filling in all of these shapes of the stripes that along the edges I am trying to create some of those first stroke details in there and pay attention to which direction they're going because they actually do change direction throughout each of the entire length of the, the stripes. I'm also going to fill in the dark shadow parts of the nose. So now that I've got enough of an area, a broad area to work in and start filling in, now I'm going to start adding some of my lighter tones to the fur and build my layers up to get the values of the fur as accurate as I can. So I'm starting off by using what I typically use with my graphite drawings is a 2H pencil. This is the lightest shade of pencil or what you would also call the lightest lead hardness in terms of graphite pencils, there is a 2H, there is an H, there is an F, there is a HB, then there's a B, 2B, 4B, etc., all the way to 8B. 8B being the softest lead hardness as well as the darkest. It's important when you work on your graphite drawings to have a good set of graphite pencils with different lead hardnesses. If you're focusing on trying to use only one lead hardness pencil, such as HB, which is a typical lead hardness that is for all uh, school grade pencils and something that a lot of you may be more familiar with. And you can get lighter shades by not pressing very hard on your paper when you draw with an HB pencil, but you really have no 
broad spectrum of getting the correct values and depth in your work as you can with having a proper set of graphite pencils. So the set that I'm using is the Faber-Castell 9000 graphite pencil set and I believe it is a really great set to use. It's very inexpensive and it's going to get you a good range of values throughout your drawing because as you are working through your drawing it's important that you're using multiple uh, value shades to get accurate values to bring out the realism in your drawings. So now I have begun using a darker pencil to start adding in some darker strokes. So I'm either using a still the same 2H which I can just press just a little bit harder to make some strokes with using just the same pencil as I was filling everything in or I could instead switch to using an H and add some first stroke layers with that instead. It's important to build up your fur structures because fur actually has highlights, mid-tones, and shadows in it. So with each fur stroke layer that you apply, you want to try and keep those in mind. You want to try and have a lighter shade for your highlights, which is filling in the base layer, which I already did, filling in for the highlights. Then you're going to add a kind of, not really a highlight fur stroke layer, but it is going to be the lightest first stroke layer that you do. Add in that, then add a mid-tone layer or two of first strokes, and then you're going to worry about getting your shadows in last. Now, because this is a small drawing, this is a four by six drawing. It is actually a little bit easier to learn how to draw with doing smaller drawings. As some people may tell you that uh, doing larger drawings is better because you can actually get more details in there, but that's the thing is that with more details, you need to know more techniques or be experienced in how to do those techniques to be able to get more realistic detail. Whereas when you're working in smaller drawings, you're working more in the aspect of how you should be looking at or how you should be thinking in how you're doing any drawings which is thinking of shapes instead of trying to draw a bunch of details so with this tiger because it's small and because the reference photo that i am using is small as well that means that there's less details to see and I am forced to try and look at shapes instead of all of those details. So I'm drawing with a lot of shapes and just creating shapes instead of spending my time worrying about all of these little tiny details. Now I do use a 0.3 or 0.3 millimeter um, mechanical pencil for some of those really really fine um, details here and there, but even using a really fine millimeter uh, mechanical pencil, you're still not going to be able to get absolute fine details on such a small drawing unless you took probably painstaking efforts to try and do every little tiny stroke just so precise. But that would just make you go crazy trying to do that, so don't bother with that. So I am back to using a 4B to fill in some more of those sketch um, shapely shadow bits that I have in there so that I don't lose those once I start filling in with the lighter shades. Now I'm trying to get the whiskers in. This is kind of a pain in the butt, trying to get whiskers because you can't just draw over the top of your dark. So you do have to try and outline them first before you fill them in. And when you outline your, your whiskers, you wanna make sure you're picking a uh, value of pencil that is matching the colors, or not the colors, I mean the um, lightness or the values around the area that these whiskers are in. You don't wanna just grab any um, pencil at all. It needs to be very, very close to what it actually is. And then you're going to want to fill in all of the details, of course, around that. And be very, very careful with doing that so that you don't end up drawing over your whiskers. And I'll admit, I ended up drawing over, I think, a couple of them 
by accident while filling in some of the darker colors in later. Accidents happen to us all and you know what, I felt like it wasn't that important for me to try and re-get them in there because I did fill them in I think with an 8B which is the darkest lead hardness and that is kind of hard to erase without having kind of a little bit of pigment or pencil still left on the paper even though you erased it. So I didn't even bother with it, I just decided to go with the flow of my mistakes and it doesn't look bad. So now I've started to work in some of those darker first strokes into the fur. So this would be a 4B that I am taking. I'm using a mechanical pencil just because I prefer to use a mechanical pencil. Um, I'm switching up between using a 4B and a 2B to get in some of those darker fur stroke details of the fur. And one thing you'll also want to consider is that when you're filling in all of your layers with your fur, you don't wanna press hard with the pencil. If you have to press hard to get the value that you want, then you shouldn't be using that one. You need to get one that's darker instead because what you're going to end up doing is putting way too much of that value of pencil on your paper and you're going to burnish it into the paper, which is going to smooth out all of the texture of the paper and then you won't be able to get anything put on top of it at all. So you're going to really hurt yourself in the end with trying to get the details for your fur into your drawings. So just make sure that you are just applying light pressure or at least medium pressure so that you are able to get darker values in over the top as you work in more fur layers. Now I did kind of mess up on the structure of the jaw here. Um, you can have your sketch in and think that it's fairly accurate and then you start filling in your drawing and your, from where your original sketch was, things can kind of move. And that usually happens with a lot of drawings, especially the drawings that I do. Nothing always stays exactly where it was originally with the sketch. It's just part of the changes with the drawing process. So I try to adjust the jaw shape there, which is just the shadow. You don't see any of the mouth details but I wanted to make sure that that was the correct shape because if it isn't the correct shape, it's going to throw off the jaw a little bit and it won't look as realistic. So this is something you want to pay attention to in your drawings and make sure that you're re-evaluating the shapes that you have for certain key structures. It doesn't matter so much for those stripes because all tigers have different stripe patterns and you could add them anywhere that you want, change them around. And as long as your values are accurate for the rest of the fur, it's really not going to matter so much. I'm now trying to work in some of those longer strokes to the fur and with this particular fur and size of the drawing there really isn't a whole lot of detail to go off of from the reference photo that I am using and it's also not the focal point. I try to get all of my details in around the eyes, the top of the head, the nose and the mouth. And as I work further away from the head of the animal, I start adding less and less detail, even if the reference photo has more detail. It's just how I typically do my work. It saves me time. It's not absolutely necessary to have an insane amount of details throughout your drawing for it to look realistic. I mean, there's nothing against doing that if you want to do that. I know plenty of other artists love to do that and honestly, I really would too, but I just don't have time to incorporate that much detail into my work, so I usually don't. But in the area around, I guess you could call it the frill around the tiger's face, I really did try to get more of shapes and different gradient values in the fur instead of trying to focus on every little tiny hair or detail because it's very, very easy to get caught up in drawing all of those details instead of paying attention to the different shapes and the values of those shapes. So you start to notice that I bring out some of those clumping structures in the side of the tiger's face and that's exactly what I am talking about. Some of them are light and then they have little bits of some darker strokes in there that are actual individual hairs as well as some that are clumps of darker sections. So you wanna make sure that as you're drawing the long hairs in your drawing of either this tiger or other animals, that you try to make sure that you build those clumping 
um, fur structures as well as the values before you start worrying about trying to get in a bunch of little individual hair details. And now I'm going to work in some of the stripes on the back of the tiger and it doesn't matter to be so specific about getting these exactly accurate as they need to be because this again the stripes could be any which patterns all tigers have different stripes and for doing these strokes you'll notice that i'm holding my pencil relatively flat and that's because there's not a whole lot of detail out in this section, or at least I don't want there to be, so I'm trying to flatten out the amount of lead that I'm putting on the paper because I don't want to get super fine details here as I've slowly transitioned out. And that's another thing that you should keep in mind with your drawings too. If you've started doing a certain type of style with your drawing, say, as an example, what I'm doing, I'm focusing all of the detail on the head and around the mouth, and I'm tapering off the detail as I get further and further away. If I were to just start drawing a bunch of super fine details on the back of this tiger's shoulder and I've already started tapering off before that, then my drawing would end up looking really weird. You would be wondering why is this part of the tiger in focus and then this part's blurry. It would look like, imagine a photograph where somebody photoshopped it like that you would think it would look weird right so you don't want to do that with your art either once you pick a style for your drawing you should try to pick how you want to do it before you even put any of your pencil on your paper but once you've got it down and start putting it in there don't change what you're doing just keep going with what style you have so you don't end up with your drawing looking all weird Now for this back section of fur on the tiger, uh, I would say it's a little bit more complicated than the fur on the tiger's actual face because it is longer strokes and it's more important to try and get those shapes right as well as incorporate a little bit of um, individual hair details in there as well, especially up on the um, back neck of the tiger close to the ear. So it does take me a little while to kind of go back through over and over again to rebuild all of my structures. So you'll see me using this 2B, it is my 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil. And I use this a lot to build up the shadows for the fur because 2B is a good lead hardness for this. Um, I can go really light with it and I can get some lighter values in, not super light, like 2H of course, but, and then I can press a little harder and get darker values that are really close to 4B because 2B is close to 4B. So this is kind of handy to use. I do typically use this mechanical pencil a lot. And as I said before, that uh, I have an entire materials list of all of the supplies that I use for all of my drawings, including this drawing in the video description if you want to check out this mechanical pencil that I'm using. So now I've kind of come to a place with my drawing where I've pretty much got all of these structures in, or at least the main structures, everything's filled in. I'm trying to get the values right. So I'm reevaluating all of the values throughout my work and trying to readjust those to get those to be more accurate. And as well, I hadn't used the 8B yet because it is my darkest value, so I saved that for last. And I'm going through all of the stripes for the tiger and all of the areas that need to be really, really dark or as close to black as possible. I am adding this 8B over the top to fill that in and make it really, really dark, which is going to really make this drawing start to pop and look more realistic.
So you'll notice that I'm taking an eraser. I'm using a Tombow Mono eraser and I am erasing off some of those fur details that I did, this clumping section of fur between the tiger's face and his neck. And I am trying to create more highlights or clumping structures instead of focusing on adding a bunch of individual strokes. And this is something that you can do to help yourself out with that. I already went through and tried to build in the values that I needed with pencil strokes and going back through and erasing over the top of that to try and lighten some areas up and create some more of those, um, more of gradient clumping structures is what I'm doing. You can learn more graphite tips from the top right video. And you can also learn how to draw wildlife and pets with colored pencils, graphite, or soft pastels with my real-time 1 to 15 hour drawing tutorials with a voiceover of tips and explanations over on my Patreon. Signing up gives you instant access to a growing library of tutorials and new ones added each month. I'll have a link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.